Islam. لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا الفتنا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما لمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم Actually brothers and sisters in Islam and sometimes I sit and think as to how have I become a Muslim why am I a Muslim what was the path that led me to Islam? The reasons that I am sitting here today speaking to you. And only about nine years ago I wasn't. I was doing, well in that time I was really searching. But if you go a little bit back, let's say 11 years or 12 years, I was doing totally different things. So I think about how come <coughs> after 9-11 for example, all the media, distortion that took place of Islam, still Islam entered my heart. And sometime even today I look at new Muslims and I say, SubhanAllah, how come they became Muslim? After all those things that people put out there about Islam, still people are coming to Islam. <clears throat> and I remember very well how I felt at that time and how I was looking at Islam. But the image was changing slowly as Allah was guiding me. And we need to understand what does it mean when we say God guides us. Right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He guides whom He wills. And this is a very important statement. Is Allah just picking like this guy? No. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually knows as He is Al-Alim and Al-Hakim and Al-Qadir. And he knows, he has, he's the all-knowing. He is the all-wise. He is the all-able. And he knows exactly who deserves to be guided. Who sincerely wants truth in their hearts. And this is something very important. Uh, the statement that whoever Allah wants to guide, if he, or he guides whomever he wills. يَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ as it says in the Quran. <clears throat> so we look at it from an interesting point of view. Yes, people make choices without a doubt. People have been given freedom of choice. Allah has given every single one of us freedom of choice to choose. Choose this or that. Look and weigh the pros and cons of things. Look at the proofs of things. At the other side though, there are many people who, specifically when it comes to Islam, have looked at Islam and said, well, I can't say anything really against it. All the proofs are for it. I just can't be a Muslim though. We know, for example, John Esposito, which is a scholar of Islam. He knows more Islam than all of us here, actually. And he's a non-Muslim, he's a Catholic. <clears throat> so, you wonder, there's other, in the literature, of the Orientalists. There are people who studied the Arabic, who went and traveled. And there's one statement of one of the people who translated the Quran, a non-Muslim. And he said that he was fighting with himself actually because of the beauty of the Quran. He would sit, obviously not praying, but during Ramadan, he would sit on the balcony in Egypt and listen to the Imam reciting Tarawiyah prayer. And he says, I'm being moved left and right and I'm fighting with my heart, with the beautiful words of the Imam, of the old Imam, how he recites. And these people were, were, they knew, they knew what is Islam, they knew what is the Quran, yet still their hearts were not changed. Finding Islam, brothers and sisters, is not hard. 
but at the same time it's not the easiest thing <coughs> to commit to come into it to become a practicing Muslim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I said he knows exactly each and every one's heart every single beat that you have in your heart that your heart beats every thought Allah he knows he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows what is in the hearts of the people in the breasts of the people and he knows I have to reiterate that every thought he knows who's thinking about finding the truth he knows who is moving away from finding the truth he knows who's in the back of their minds they're saying oh man this is such a, an amazing proof but I don't know my girlfriend my boyfriend what am, what's my what's my mom gonna say my dad can I stop partying uh, it's like oh man just moving away from it Allah knows that but every single person in their life have a point way, where they're split between making the decision of searching for the truth, searching for God, or of moving away. And usually that's when there's some calamity or some life-changing event. And subhanAllah, I was praying in the masjid yesterday in downtown Abu Dhabi. And I noticed that next to me there's a man, it's mother prayer, and he's not praying properly. It's so obvious, like I'm praying, but it's so obvious. It's just like he's, he's sitting down, he's putting his hands like this, he's looking around, you know, he's looking at me, it's like I'm trying to focus, but he's so obvious that he doesn't know how to pray. So after the prayer, I turned to him, and I said to him in, Ar in Arabic, like where, where are you from you know my brother and he didn't understand then I tried then I said okay I said do you speak Arabic English and he didn't understand that I asked him in Arabic then I said in English do you speak English and he spoke broken English I said where are you from he said I'm from Colombia from, from South America I said okay he said uh, is it okay if I'm here I said yeah, no problem <laughs> come please <laughs> welcome he said actually I've been passing by this place for three weeks I've been here in Abu Dhabi for three weeks and I've been passing by this place every day and actually the masjid is amazing because it's in a building but it's a glass wall so you can see through it so you can see the people praying and everything so he said I felt so in inquisitive about this so I I decided should I go in you know every three weeks every day I, th I thought should I go should I go should I go and then finally I decided today to come in I asked why today he said tomorrow I've, I've, I did some test results some medical results and tomorrow I'm getting some other results and it's very important I am sick and I just feel like praying he's like I saw these people praying so I felt like going in. And you should see the way he was looking at people praying. Not like, kind of like, mm, like he's like, you know, he's like staring. He's, he's totally captivated by the sujood. Literally, the, this one Emirati guy is praying his sunnah, and he's sitting next to him, like facing him. He's like, like this, you know? And I, I, I didn't want, I wanted him to, you know, I said, no problem. I make him feel comfortable. But what is interesting that he felt that in this point in his life, when he's got a health problem, he saw something and that opened him towards this and every single person in this life is at one point or the other faced with this issue right we all have some life changing we lose someone or someone gets sick some people like I know someone who lost her dog her dog died and she was a, a revert about three four five years very big supposedly die on YouTube she lost her dog, her puppy, and she apostated from Islam because she lost her dog. Because her question was, how can Allah take my dog away from me? <coughs> you understand? So some people take it in the negative. They say, how can Allah, how can God do this to me? How can God do this to the world that little babies are killed and so on and so forth? Or there's these tsunamis and earthquakes and so on. So some people take it one way and they move away from God. And some people take it a different way. And they find the meaning in all these tests and tribulations as to why are these things happening to us, to the world. 
Some people are waking up and some people are falling asleep. Okay? So, again, it's based on the condition of the heart. Allah knew exactly who is sincere and who is not. And that determines the, the directions that they will take, actually. The choices that they will make and how open they will be towards the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in a beautiful ayah, Surah 6, 125. Just amazing ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من اشتر رجيم فمن يريد الله أن يحديه يشرح صدره للإسلام ومن يريد أن يضله يجعل صدره ضيقا هرجا كأنما يصعد في السماء كذلك يجعل الله الرجس على الذين لا يؤمنون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide من يريد الله أن يحديه Whoever Allah, فَمَنْ يُرِيدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَحْدِيَهُ Whoever Allah wants to guide him, he opens, he expands their chest. Pay attention, because this ayah is very, very deep actually. And whoever Allah wants to misguide, he makes his chest ضَيِّقَ ضَيِّق it means constricted. It's it closes. It's it's hard. As if he were to climb to the skies. As he were to elevate. Keep this in mind. SubhanAllah, we know very well that the heart is one of the most important parts in our body. When you feel happy, when you feel like you're on the truth, when you feel sincerity in your life, you feel like your heart is expanded. You're, you can breathe easily, right? When you have some problems, when you have some issues in your life, you feel like your heart is, is someone just squeezing it. True? But look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. كأنما يصعد في السماء يصعد يعني it means to to go up to the sky it's, this is amazing actually this is one of the miracles of the Quran that each word is used perfectly because why does Allah Allah doesn't give any simi, any mithal any example just for no reason Allah gives each and every mithal every example in the Quran for the people to ponder Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Do they not? تَدَبَّر means to ponder. You cannot read the Quran, brothers and sisters. Whoever is reading the Quran and does not ponder upon its meanings is really, subhanAllah, I'm not saying you're wasting your time because there's benefit and blessing in reading the Quran just by reading it. But you're losing. You're losing. You are only taking part of the benefit. We need to do tadabbur. We need to think. We need to sit with these ayats and try to understand them. Look at this ayah, brothers and sisters. Do you know what happens when you go at high altitudes? Mountaineers, when they climb mountains. You know what happens? What happens? The chest is actually constricted. Why? Because of the difference in pressure. Okay? The higher you go, okay, the less pressure there is because the amount of air it's not there. Are you going away from it? So, basically, the less there, the, the more your chest constricts. Why? What happens is, there, your your body is trying to accustom and it's trying to, basically, take in fast breaths. Like you're hyperventilating, and this happens. You're basically your chest, your lungs constrict, so you can your your blood will flow, will take small oxygen doses and take it fast and come back fast, it basically increase. So actually exactly what happens is that the word, the perfect word, is that it becomes ضيق. It constricts. Now no one could ever know this. This is actually a law of physics. No one could ever know because they didn't have mountains that high, for example in Medina, or Mecca, that you can notice this. This is only noticed around two, uh, 3,000, 5,000 feet, actually 5,000 feet and more. Okay? So none of the mountains in Medina are around that height. So this could not be known. 
And even then, you cannot... So this is actually one of the miracles of the Qur'an that we talk a lot about the perfect words, the 